Hey, Chef Dez coming at you from my backyard again, and you got it. This is my initial cook on my new pit barrel cooker. I'm so excited to give this thing a try. I promised you I'd come back and show you my very first cook on here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that today. And we're gonna do ribs because ribs are just great. How can you go wrong with ribs? So here it is, there's the lid. I'm gonna take that off. Inside, you will have a charcoal basket. And I'll show you this. This is standard with your pit barrel cooker. And if you watch my accessory video, you'll see that I also bought the ash pan that goes with it. And all you do is you line up the feet and you give it a counterclockwise turn. And that helps to contain the ash. So you don't have to sit there and try and scoop it out of your barrel. You can just lift it out, take that off, empty it, and it's so much easier, right? What they say to do is to take your charcoal basket and fill it with charcoal right to the top of the basket. I'm a big green egg guy, so I like big green egg oak and hickory charcoal. So that's what we're gonna use today. I'm almost at the end of this bag, but I got a little bit left in here. I think it'll be enough. Then it says to take about a quarter of the charcoal out and fill up your chimney stark which we have here. And again, this is another accessory that I bought with my pit barrel cooker, made by pit barrel. And I've never used a chimney starter before. This is my first time. This is a great way to get your pit barrel going. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give this a try. We take our charcoal basket, drop it in our pit barrel. We put our grill grate in there. Again, standard with the pit barrel. Normally I have a supply of uh, natural starters, also made by Big Green Egg, and I ran out. I don't know what's happening. So all I did as a backup plan, just a couple of oil-soaked paper towels. Probably just use one, but I got two there just to be safe. Again, I've never used the chimney starter before, so we're just gonna give this a try. That's just, you know, vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever you want on those. And we just put that on the grate. Just light it in a few spots here, like that one too. And then we place our chimney starter on top of that. Now, if you're anywhere from zero to 2,000 feet sea level, according to the manual, you wanna leave that for about 12 to 15 minutes. If you're above 2,000 feet sea level, you wanna do that for at least 20 minutes just to get that fire going. Once that's done, we're gonna take that grill grate off, we're gonna dump that in the charcoal, and we're gonna get cooking, baby. We'll come back here in a bit, but right now, let's go up and do the ribs. All right, let's do these ribs. So I got four racks of baby backs. I'm gonna give this a try. This is my pit barrel, all purpose pit rub. I got free with my pit barrel cooker. So, hey, let's give it a try. I poured some here in the bowl here already. The other thing I have standing by are the four meat hooks. So again, the pit barrel cooker comes with eight of these standard. I have four of them here because I got four racks and we're just gonna prepare these really quick. So what I like to do prior to putting the rub on, whatever rub I'm using, I always use a mixture of mustard and mayonnaise. I got a couple here because this one's almost empty, but I've done all mustard. A lot of people like to do the mustard ribs and hey, I get it, lots of bold flavor, but I find sometimes it's a bit overpowering. And I've tried just mayonnaise, which is great, but I miss sort of the flavor of the mustard. So I go half and half, mustard and mayonnaise. It gives a little bit more fat on the outside, but you still get the flavor of the mustard. So we're just going to do a little bit on both. So I just do a a line like so, and then get the mayonnaise, do the same thing. And we'll do this on both sides and then get in there and just rub it around. It gives it that flavor, that fat, okay? Uh, without it being overpowering and also helps the rub to stick to the ribs. Whenever you're cooking any kind of meat, you should always put something on there to help the rub stick to the meat. And in, with ribs, in this case, the mustard and meal works fantastic. So really quick, try and get the sides as well, right? And just flip them over. I try and keep, when I'm working with raw meat, keep one hand dirty, one hand clean, so I can touch, you know, different things in my kitchen. I'm not contaminating everything with the raw meat bacteria. Oh, these are gonna be good. All right, now for some of our pit barrel all-purpose rub. I always like to rub the underside first because, I'll show you. So just give it a good dusting. Because the underside is concave, we can flip it over and you know you're not gonna risk leaving the rub on the sheet pan because it's concave. And then we just dust the top and leave them uh, top side up. 
until we're ready to put them on our pit barrel. Okay, they're nice and coated now. We're gonna do the meat hooks. You take your hook and you go down two bones. There's one, there's two. And then after that second bone, just so it has lots to sort of grab onto, you put the meat hook on like so, and it's gonna go on the rod like that. So let's do that to all of them. And what I do is I put them on the wider end, not the narrow end. This one is actually a, a smaller rack, but these are wider than here. So we'll just count in two bones. There's one, there's two. And after that second bone through the meat, wider end here, count down two bones. There's one, there's two. There we go. And we're ready to go. Let's go down and see how that fire is getting along. All right, we're about the uh, 13 minute mark now. Ribs are here, they're ready to go. Let's have a look at this chimney. So if you come have a look here, and you can see the coals are just burning red. Look past the couple on the top. You can just see that's uh, burning red. So this chimney actually works really well. I'm quite impressed. So let's grab that and we'll just get rid of our paper towel. Not a big deal. Take our grate out now, we don't need that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump these hot coals onto the top. And we're going to get our hanging rods, our meat hanging rods. They go there and there. And we want to act fairly quickly because you can see with the top off that the oxygen is getting to that fire. And anytime you take the lid off to have a peek, you want to just keep that in mind and have the lid off for as little amount of time as possible. Set and forget it. Really how easy that is. All right, let's grab our lid on there. The pit barrel cooker also comes with a meat hook tool. So what this does, when those hooks are hot, right now obviously they're not, you can grab it really easy, take it out and you know take the meat out when it's done, if you want to check the temperature, so on and so forth. Here's the vent. If you look at my previous video about the unboxing where I set this vent, there's a vent at the bottom here. That's where the airflow comes in. And it says in the manual how much to open it based on your sea level of where you're located. So I've got that set. Again, watch that video of my unboxing and you'll see what I did to get that done. And I also give you a snapshot of the manual as well where it shows you the different settings. So we're just gonna let that cook. The greatest thing about the pit barrel cooker is you set it, you forget it. We have our airflow set. The top airflow is restricted by the meat hanging rods here. You can see some of the smoke coming out. So there's not a lot of outflow airflow. It regulates the temperature based on our setting at the bottom. You're looking around 300, 325 degrees for a cook. So it's not a low and slow smoker, it's a cooker. Okay, but the easiest thing about it, set it, forget it, hang the meat, take it off when it's done. For those ribs, we're looking about 200, 205, for Fahrenheit temperature when they are done. So we'll check them, we'll come back, have a look, see where we're at. I'll let you join in the fun and we'll see you then. This is my first time, so I'm really curious to see how these ribs are shaping up. It's been just over one hour. So I invite you to join me to have a look at this. Let's, let's do this. Oh yeah, look at those. Man, it smells incredible. I wish you could smell. Wow, like just over the top. I'm gonna take out that small rack just so we can Put it there, have a look, take a temperature, uh, and see what's going on. Now always put the lid back on, as I mentioned. You don't want extra oxygen getting in there and fueling that fire more than we should, right? So I'm just gonna have a look. I can tell by touching it how it wiggles and stuff when I've taken it out that we're not there yet. We're only at 145, so we've got a ways to go. But again, I just wanted to have a sneak peek. I've never done that before, but they're looking good so far. That's only an hour, so we'll just keep checking them. Now, I always tell people that come to my Zoom classes that cooking is never time. Cooking is always a texture change, a visual, like a crust formation or an internal temperature. Cooking is always that, it's never time. Time is given to us to give us an approximation as to when our meal is gonna be ready. So what we're looking for in this is again, not time, but the internal temperature of those ribs. We should be hitting 200, 205 Fahrenheit when they're done and they should be just pull off the bone at that point. It's gonna be amazing, I can tell already because it smells good, they look great. We'll see you back here in a little bit. This is why you do a first cook. I mean, this is my first time using it. So a little bit of user error here is when I dumped in the charcoal from the charcoal starter, I should have moved it around a little bit, placed that little bit of charcoal on top of the hot coals. I just dumped it in, put the meat in and stuff like that. And it went down really low. Remember when I took it off at the one hour mark, there was barely any smoke. This is the way it should be, okay? So at one point I realized, okay, this is not cooking very fast because I didn't do that. So I moved everything around and everything started back up and it's been running 
no problem ever since. So let me show you this now, but watch the smoke when you take it off. This is the way it should look like, okay? Look at this. Yeah. Oh, and it just smells so good. <laughs> smells awesome. And see, the oxygen's getting there too, right away. We're gonna take one of these out and let you have a look. Oh yeah, look at that, baby. That is looking good. And see, you're getting the pullback. You should always look for about a quarter inch to a half inch of pullback on the bones there. So this is looking really good. And you look at the other side. Oh, that is awesome. So what we're gonna do now, I'll just show you one here. And this is the smallest one. And so the other ones still need a bit of time, but I'm just gonna sauce this one up. I told you I'm a big green egg fan, right? So I'm using the Kansas City big green egg, sweet and smoky barbecue sauce. I love my ribs sauced up. So we're just gonna do this really quick, get these glazed on, this sauce. So because of my user error, I'm at four hours right now. So, but again, cooking is never time. Cooking is never time. You gotta make sure you have your internal temperature. You're looking for a visual. But look at that, that looks awesome. Let's grab my tool here and, oh yeah, baby. Let's put that back in there. Awesome. Get a little bit of pullback on this one too. That's what we're looking for, right? Look at that. I'm gonna sauce that one up as well. Now you don't wanna leave the sauce on them too long in the cooker because remember the high sugar content is going to burn, right? That's why we never sauce ahead of time. It's always just a glaze at the end. So get it in there, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes tops, in my opinion. Put that over, oh yeah. And wow, the, the aroma in the backyard is just incredible. All right. The other two are bigger. I'm gonna leave those on there for a little bit longer before I start. All right, let's check that first rack now. I think it's glazed enough. Oh yeah, look at that. That's amazing. Take the uh, hook out of there. Let's cut a piece off. Now obviously very hot. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. Wow. You know what? For the price point of this, this is cheaper than your standard barbecue. You're gonna have competition style barbecue right in your own backyard. And it just pulls off the bone. Look at this. Mm. That's so good. Make sure you check this thing out. Pit barrel cooker. I look forward to cooking so many things on this. Stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and I'll bring you along on the journey. Until next time, See you again, folks!